Shalom from Jerusalem. This is TV7's Israel at War update, and today is the 16th day since the Islamist terror organizations from the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip launched an onslaught on southern Israel and committed a massacre, murdering some 1,400, mostly civilians, and also wounding over 3,500, including foreign nationals and uh, much more. Uh, since then, obviously, the state of Israel has launched a counteroffensive on multiple fronts. Nevertheless, a, a full-scale ground inf uh, invasion has yet to be uh, manifest. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to immediately turn to central Israel, where we're joined by our TV7 editor at large, Mr. Amir Oren. Amir, give us the latest on the various fronts. Where are we at this stage in time? So, Jonathan, you and uh, our distinguished guests uh, probably remember uh, the term phony war, what uh, took place or did not take place between late September of 1939 and uh, May of 1940, when uh, the uh, Western Front seemingly froze until the Germans uh, renewed their offensive. And this seems to be, uh, without, of course, comparing the parties, this seems to be the situation right now on the ground um, in the uh, south of Israel, between the Negev and uh, Gaza. Uh, more than two weeks after the uh, Hamas uh, horrific massacre, Israel has yet uh, to launch its uh, incursion. Um, we have uh, skirmishes, we have uh, some uh, standoff uh, fights. Um, uh, a Palestinian was caught uh, after hiding uh, two weeks uh, inside uh, Israel when uh, he tried to cross the fence back. But most of the fighting right now is concentrated uh, in the north on the Lebanese border. And there too, um, no one uh, on the Israeli side has uh, crossed the border already uh, for uh, an invasion. It is still standoff uh, shooting from across uh, the uh, border or aerial vehicles taking out um, Hezbollah positions or the northern branch of uh, Hamas. So all in all, everyone is still waiting uh, for the go decision regarding the ground movement into Gaza. Indeed. Uh, also joining us from an undisclosed location is Brigadier General in Reserve, Doron Gavish, the commander of the Israeli Air Force Task Force for Air and Missile Defense. Thank you for joining us, General. What can you give us on the latest operational developments pertaining to the current war? Well, uh, Jonathan, I would be focusing a little bit more about uh, the Air Force uh, this time, uh, since we have with us uh, uh, General Gershon Cohen, which I allow him to speak about uh, the ground forces. But in, in general, uh, the fight is there. And uh, the Israeli Air Force, as part of the IDF, is uh, continuously striking. So I agree that, of course, everyone is talking about the uh, going in into the Gaza Strip, but it doesn't mean that uh, Israel is uh, standing back and, uh, and, and doing nothing. Uh, the Air Force is there, continuously uh, striking uh, Hamas targets. Uh, uh, also, the Navy joined uh, lately. We saw some artillery also, but, but th this is happening uh, continuously uh, in the south. And also, the Hamas is uh, shooting uh, rockets uh, toward Israel. Uh, of course, mainly for the civilian uh, cities. Uh, we saw it in the last uh, a few days, yesterday evening, uh, today. And uh, for this, we have, of course, the Israeli uh, air defense, mainly the Iron Dome, who is uh, intercepting a large uh, number of those uh, rockets which are shot uh, toward Israel. We always say that this is not hermetic. And this is uh, complementary to this. Uh, we have... Uh, the, um, of course, the home front command was asking the Israeli population to go into shelters and the combinations of those two lower uh, the number of uh, people that uh, are hurt. And we have uh, very low numbers at the end of the day, although they uh, shot all, already around 7,000 rockets. Uh, so Israel, I believe it's the larger number of rockets shot toward any city in the world uh, including uh, World War II. And uh, so th this is uh, in the south and uh, in the north, uh, we are still under the war threshold. 
דרך חיזבאללה, אין דרך חמאס אינסייד, דרך חיזבאללה שוטינג סורד ישראל, and this is happening all the time, uh, rockets, uh, we see some uh, UAVs, uh, we see some anti-tanks uh, that are trying to show toward Israel, uh, but uh, on those uh, we could say that uh, uh, they are being uh, stopped basically, the, the rockets were intercepted, the UAVs were intercepted and all those uh, anti-tank units are being uh, um, taken care of uh, by, by the Israeli IDF. So this is uh, where we are there and of course at last uh, we have the cooperation uh, with the United States, uh, with the CENCOM which is very close, we are talking uh, to each other in uh, all levels. Uh, the ships are uh, still here, of course, the carrier with his forces. Uh, we saw what happened uh, with those, uh, um, 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 uh, what came from uh, from Yemen and was done by Senko. So the, 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 the relations there are very close and very tight. Indeed, to highlight, of course, the fact that uh, the, the Ford Carrier Strike Group is currently mobilized in the eastern Mediterranean uh, uh, off the shores of Cyprus, of course, and then we know that the uh, Eisenhower Carrier Strike Group is en route uh, towards the Persian Gulf, where it uh, uh, seeks with uh, uh, key focus to uh, establish maritime dominance, uh, intelligence gathering, and deterrence vis-a-vis -vis the Islamic Republic of Iran. That, of course, requires a whole other dimension attached to it to be able to convince the Iranians to be deterred, but uh, we will discuss that uh, momentarily. First of all, I'd like to move to another undisclosed location where we're joined by Major General in Reserve, Gil Shona Cohen, uh, an Army uh, uh, Corps Commander, and, and so much more. General, it's so good to have you. Uh, what can you give us on the latest, from an operational perspective, on the latest developments, and where do you th see the, the current um, uh, leadership of the IDF and uh, the, the political establishment uh, with regard to preparations for a full-scale ground invasion? Actually, uh, this war is absolutely unique regarding even to 1973 war, uh, speaking about conditions of uncertainty at a strategic level, because in October 1973, a uh, IDF uh, high echelon command and of course the political leadership uh, leading the war uh, immediately they found themselves with a fixed uh, front uh, all questions regarding uncertainty about the arena have been clear it means we had a war simultaneously with Syria and Egypt maybe Jordan could join, but after one or two days, it was quite clear that they will not join in a new front. It means that the arena was quite uh, clear regarding who is fighting, where is the main location of fighting, and uh, no more uh, dilemmas about how to prevent other fronts to emerge without our willing, willingness that they will emerge. Right now, it is not only the dilemma about the main effort in the north or in the south. Immediately after the first speech of President Biden, we could recognize that we don't have a green light to open a, a kind of strike a, by Israeli force uh, in Lebanon. It means that we can bribe the uh, challenge for the Northern Commander. Very, very uh, complicated. In the Southern Command, it is quite clear because the main question for the Southern Command is not what, but when. When is getting green light to invade? In the Northern command, the main question is whether at all, maybe by his own mistake, Hezbollah will open a new front. This is something very uh, complicated, uh, abs uh, absolutely under the orders of Northern Commander. 
Indeed. Uh, also joining us from Washington, to, uh, D.C., to contribute uh, to the American angle is uh, Mr. Mike Duran, uh, former uh, senior director at the National Security Council in Washington, D.C., and a senior fellow currently at the Hudson Institute. It's good having you, Mike. Uh, I'd like to ask you about your perspective to the current developments pertaining uh, to the American perspective of things. On the one hand, obviously, the United States imposed uh, operational constraints, strategic constraints, uh, tactical constraints on Israel from being able to wage war full scale, obviously. Uh, nevertheless, there is a significant factor of a, a sort of posture, or new posture in the Middle East uh, with uh, key intent to deter the enemy. Nevertheless, mis mixed messages are at the same time contrastingly coming out of Washington about whether or not this is uh, something that we can expect to see joining shoulder to shoulder. Uh, when we're talking about uh, various developments on the ground. And then we see also American casualties throughout the region by Iranian proxies time and again, and we don't see a, a resolute American response to this. So where are things standing right now? Well, <clears throat> thank you. That uh, set up my comments uh, perfectly. I, I would like to just uh, continue with the analysis that uh, General Hakoen was uh, was presenting, um, and I'll I'll take it out another layer up to the um, up to the Washington element, uh, which I think is part of the strategic ambiguity uh, that uh, General Hakoen uh, presented so clearly. Uh, there is a pathology at the center of uh, American foreign policy, and this is a part of the problem that Israel has right now. Um, the pathology is that the uh, the Biden administration believed that it could stabilize the Middle East by uh, effectively appeasing Iran. They have different words for it. They don't use the word appease. They say uh, de-escalation, dialogue, diplomacy, uh, regional integration. They have a whole set of buzzwords that they use, but we all know what it means. It means uh, turning a blind eye to uh, Iranian oil sales to China. They don't want to take Iranian oil off the market. That would be a uh, uh, very problematic for them in terms of their larger foreign policy goals. Um, they uh, they have been working to come up with channels of communication with the Iranians to stabilize the region all across the region with the Houthis in Yemen, uh, uh, in Iraq, um, uh, and elsewhere. They were hoping to bring uh, Israel into this system. And that was the essence of the maritime border agreement that was uh, made with the Lapid government. That was, in essence, concessions to Hezbollah from Israel uh, in order to stabilize it. And we were all told that a partnership had been had been created. Uh, the the when this uh, the the administration was not ready for this attack, which is an attack by Iran on not just Israel, but on the American alliance system. They refuse to define it this way. The American policy at this point is trying to neck down the front and trying to localize it in Gaza. And I have a slight disagreement with General Hakoyan here. I don't believe that because of this dialogue with the Americans, I don't believe that even the Southern commander knows exactly what he's going to do when he goes into Gaza, because he's going to come up against very powerful American restraints. We have already seen those. We've already seen those. The Israelis put a, the, the, the Israelis put a, um, uh, a uh, siege around Gaza and the Americans broke it. And uh, um, uh, Defense Minister Gallant himself admitted that, uh, and, uh, admitted that publicly. We now see see very credible reports in the press that the um, that the Americans, uh, uh, as you have already mentioned, General Cohen mentioned, they took a, 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 an attack against Hezbollah off of the uh, uh, off of the table. So what what has happened is in the dialogue between the United States and the Israelis, the Israelis have been are, are limited to the southern front and they are limited to what they can do on the southern front. They're also being told time and again to uh, to uh, to look out for civilian casualties. This ultimately will not work. Israel will not be able to achieve. I agree. Its war, will not be able to achieve its war goals, and in the um, and in the end, it will be an invitation to Iran and its proxies to open up other fronts in other places. The only way to end this is for the United States and Israel together to establish escalation dominance over Iran not just over uh, uh, not just over Hamas or 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 Hezbollah but the administration has yet to define the problem that way so among the strategically challenges the strategic challenges that the Israeli leadership faces it's convincing the Americans to define this war for what it is 
an Iranian effort to undermine the American alliance system. Absolutely yes. agree regarding the uh, no uh, southern uh, echelon, but yet uh, speaking about the tactical effort, how to invade, how to lead it, how to synchronize it, he has is really challenged by a lot of tactical uh, uh, obligations. About that, his job is clear. Indeed. Uh, well, I'd, I'd like to bring in uh, Mr. Olin uh, into this conversation. And uh, when we're looking at the various challenges currently at hand, on the one hand, obviously, the United States came into this region uh, following the war uh, with two strike group carriers, very uh, vocal about uh, their will to deter the Islamic Republic of Iran. But you already mentioned from day one that the this uh, contribution, the contribution of weaponry is also a constraining force. How can Israel now maneuver within this reality that obviously challenges its capacity to bring about a decisive victory that will change reality into a, a Gaza Strip that does not pose a threat to Israel anymore? And quite frankly, if this doesn't happen, we can expect this atrocities on southern Israel's October 7th to happen again? The uh, top uh, priority for President Biden is securing American lives, that is the hostages and also uh, Palestinians with American passports uh, trapped, quote-unquote, uh, in Gaza, wishing uh, to get out, and uh, containing uh, the conflict uh, so it does not become a regional one and involve uh, uh, Hezbollah and Iran. However, uh, the Israeli position is not monolithic. And uh, one gets the sense that Netanyahu, um, in addition uh, to uh, obeying the uh, instructions by President Biden, also finds uh, that uh, they are uh, to his liking, uh, to his temper. Um, recently, uh, he uh, praised the late Prime Minister Shamir, uh, who was not one of his biggest fans. But nevertheless, when Shamir was Prime Minister in 1991, he refused to get involved in uh, the war. He, he refused the recommendations by uh, Defense Minister Ahrens uh, to send uh, a strike uh, force, a division-sized force, into western Iraq. Uh, where the uh, Scots were launched from. And Netanyahu has praised Shamir for that, for uh, his uh, technical restraint, so as not to break the Western-led coalition. And uh, this seems to be uh, a sort of a preparation of uh, public opinion uh, for the day when the various versions of what took place in the war cabinet will come out uh, with Gallant uh, now playing the role that uh, Misha Ahrens played uh, 32 years ago, and uh, Netanyahu restraining him, both because uh, he thinks that this is the better option and because he is in tune with the American position. Maybe we should, we should add that at least regarding the Southern Front and regarding the Hamas, uh, Israel is very determined in, in all levels. And uh, we hear it again and again. And uh, we heard uh, uh, the chief of staff talking uh, only yesterday with the commanders of Golani explaining them how we are going to penetrate, how it's going to be done. And, and this is it. I mean, at least if there is certainty around all those things, is that uh, Israel is determined uh, to fight uh, the Hamas uh, till the win. Moreover, I'd like to ask you, General Gavish, uh, there is really unprecedented collaboration between CENTCOM and the IDF, particularly also on missile and air defense, something that you're heading here in Israel. Uh, can you provide us uh, a little bit of an overview of what are the current challenges and threats that we can see here uh, at this stage? And of course, the uh, emerging threat that may also occur the moment the Iranian proxy Hezbollah may indeed enter into the conflict, uh, full-fledged into it, so to speak. And you mentioned, of course, the uh, cruise missiles that were fired from Yemen as an illustration uh, that were 
obviously intended for Israel, uh, these uh, Houthis or Ansar Allah, depends who you ask, uh, fired uh, particularly drones also towards the American uh, uh, destroyer that intercepted those uh, projectiles as well. Well, in, on the on the operational level, uh, we could say that, uh, you know, we, we are preparing for this uh, quite a long time. Uh, together with the uh, UCOM in the last uh, two years uh, with the uh, CENCOM, and now I'm talking about the ballistic missile uh, defense and the enhancing of the defense of Israel by the United States. So, so this is really something that uh, we talked about, uh, we trained uh, continuously during uh, the last uh, uh, two, two years. So this, uh, sorry, uh, 20 years. And uh, so this is, of course, something that uh, we are still talking about uh, on the operational level. If uh, something like this would be uh, needed, how do we do it? And what is really important is that uh, the, the forces are, are around as, as we could see and things are much shorter than uh, if it would be happening a few weeks ago. Uh, so the, the, dis the discussions are in all levels, operational uh, discussions, of course, we cannot get into uh, detail now, but uh, uh, but the, the, those uh, United States uh, forces, uh, force CENCOM, enhancing uh, our defense, this is of course something that uh, it is uh, on the table if it would be a full-scale uh, uh, war and uh, of course if, if it would be initiated uh, by, by, by our enemies. So from the operational uh, point of view, uh, there are uh, of course continuously discussions. The, mm -hmm. wrong. the Department of Defense announced that they are uh, deploying a third terminal uh, high altitude air defense uh, system. Maybe this is also unprecedented. What does that mean? Well, um, you know, we, we cannot get now into the exact details. Uh, what was out in the press is out in the press. And uh, but we, but we saw that there are significant uh, United States uh, means here. In Israel, uh, next to the carrier, there are uh, two BMD uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, missile groups uh, that, uh, of course, uh, could be operated uh, quite fast. So, so the means are in these areas. We could uh, there could be all kinds uh, of means that we deployed uh, here to Israel. I cannot refer to something specific uh, now, but what whatever was in the news, it's in the news. Uh, General Cohen, I'd like to refer the next question to you, since we don't have very much time left, and I'd like to hear all of you uh, still. Uh, when we're talking about uh, how this war started, October 7th, the massacre of 1,400 Israelis, majority of them being civilians, 3,500 uh, wounded, uh, parents were butchered in front of their children, mothers were uh, raped and then sent naked throughout and then shot in the head while walking outside while their children were still being dragged outside by those beasts that are calling themselves Hamas or whatever. Uh, the fact of the matter is if we want to be able to live on the land south of Israel, this reality cannot return and without a decisive victory, which is both an Israeli interest as well as an American interest for that matter, and in Western civilization interest, Hamas must be obliterated. Absolutely. And uh, uh, may I allow to speak not only as a general, but from a cultural point of view and Zionistic point of view. Actually, it is a main challenge for the whole story of Zionism. Because if we are under massacre, in the Israeli state. So, after all, someone could claim that Zionism just replaced one disease by another. Pogrom in Kishinev was replaced by pogrom, pogrom in Nachal Oz. Of course, it is a huge disaster for the whole all hope of Zionism. And they succeeded to do it, and that anxiety uh, led leading the north as well in leading the constraints in the northern border because of course he is aware about the constraints not to bring a war but on the other side he is committed not to bring an, a, a, a kind of such event in his arena.
Indeed. Uh, well, uh, I, I believe this is obviously uh, the atrocious event that occurred in southern Israel uh, and uh, even more atrocious reality in which we see people, masses in the United States, in Europe, in Western civilization at large, Canada, Australia and elsewhere, walking and praising those deeds. Mr. Duran, I, I really couldn't fathom. Uh, to what degree the, the Western civilization has come to at this stage. And obviously Israel is at the forefront of this, but this could happen also in the West and elsewhere if something is not being done as we're speaking. Uh, uh, abs absolutely. Uh, but I think the Israelis need to absorb. Uh, it, it's difficult. They have to absorb all, all that they've seen over the last week. <clears throat> Pardon me. They face uh, three problems simultaneously on a sort of large macro level. Number one, Iran has disruptive military technologies that it has distributed to its entire network, and it is coordinating that network towards specific goals. And no one, not the United States, not Israel, has perfect answers to all of those disruptive military capabilities. We've been focused so much on the... On the um, on the nuclear question, we haven't paid close attention to what they can do with a quadcopter and an RPG taking out a $5 million America of a tank and, uh, and taking... So, sorry? Great. Actually, I, I claim that again and again that I'm not afraid from the nuclear. Uh, by the umbrella of nuclear, they just pushed that uh, threat. Exactly. They have, they, they have um, an offense-dominant regime in the region <laughs> and with when it, when they go nuclear, it will be a super offense dominant regime. That's that's point number one. And but the, even the Americans don't have a good answer to this. It, the Americans can develop an answer to this, but at a great political cost to the Biden administration, which it doesn't want to pay. Um, number two, Israel the, Israel faces a YouTube uh, uh, information challenge. Iran, Russia. China, they have developed uh, Hamas, Hezbollah, they have developed over the last uh, 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 two decades a very sophisticated political um, warfare operation, which is beating you. This is all these people that are out in the street in Western capitals, all the people that are out in the street in uh, Arab and Muslim capitals. The entire think about where we were just a week ago. We were this close to Saudi Israeli normalization, we were this close to a new chapter in Turkish. Israeli uh, uh, Israeli relations. And that's all gone now. It's all gone. The entire Muslim world and part of the Western world is playing Iran's game now, is sending Iran's messages, is reinforcing Iran's messages. I talk to young people here in America who are only vaguely aware of what's going on, and they start repeating his bullet talking points to me. This is, we, we, can, we, can all, we, we, we can all lament it, and we should lament it, but that's not an answer. That's not an answer to it. And I, I, I hear there's a disconnect between the Israeli sensibility, because Israelis are uh, so outraged by what happened and so um, assured of their righteousness, and I believe that they are righteous in, in all of this, but their message, their, their tone and their message doesn't, doesn't strike the right target here in the West. This is a problem. I can't solve it here, but we need to be aware of it as a very severe Indeed. problem. <clears throat> and then finally, the third thing is that this is one of the worst diplomatic um, uh, uh, diplomatic uh, uh, coalition um, uh, situations in which Israel has ever fought a war. Uh, the United States has been dismantling its its Middle Eastern alliance system. Uh, it's it's been isolating each one of its allies in front of the Iranian threat. It, 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 uh, it, it, uh, uh, it distanced itself from Saudi Arabia and its effort to go after the Houthis. It denigrated Mohammed bin Salman. It denigrated, it, it denigrated Erdogan and it built up the PKK in Northeast Syria. It, um, uh, uh, it uh, uh, it denigrated Prime Minister Netanyahu, turned, wanted to turn him into a, a, a pariah. While the United States has been disaggregating its alliance, the Iranians have been aggregating their alliance with these disruptive military capabilities. This is a huge strategic challenge for Israel. And I, I, I while I agree 100 percent with uh, General Hakohen about this being the central challenge to Zionism since 1948, 
This is also a central challenge for the Western, uh, the, the Western alliance system in the Middle East. And that needs to be said over and over again so that it isn't defined Indeed. in Washington and in European capitals as purely a, an Israeli problem. Well, unfortunately, this is all the time that we have for today. So I'd like to thank Mr. Owen, General Gavish, General Aquin, and Mr. Duran for being part of today's update. I'd like to thank all of you at home as well. Until our next update from here in Jerusalem. Shalom. I'm Eran Etzion, former Deputy National Security Advisor here in Israel, a diplomat, a strategist by training. I'm very happy to be at TV7 and offer my interpretation along my esteemed colleagues. The uh, strong point of TV7 is to be a reliable source of authoritative insight in an era of shallow news environment that is very difficult for viewers to trust.